B.B. King put it, the beautiful thing about learning is that nobody can take that away from you. And learning is really in the broadest sense what I really want to talk about today because your education, of course, isn't ending here. In many ways, it's only just begun. The world has so many lessons to teach you. I consider the world, this earth, to be like a school and our life, the classrooms. And sometimes here in this planet Earth School, the lessons often come dressed up as detours or roadblocks and sometimes as full-blown crises. And the secret I've learned to getting ahead is being open to the lessons. Lessons from the grandest universe of all, that is the universe itself. It's being able to walk through life eager and open to self-improvement and that which is going to best help you evolve because that's really why we're here, to evolve as human beings. So, to grow into being more of ourselves, always moving to the next level of understanding, the next level of compassion and growth. I think the great, one of the greatest compliments I've ever received, I interviewed with a reporter when I was first starting out in Chicago, and then many years later I saw the same reporter and she said to me, you know what, you really haven't changed. You've just become more of yourself. And that is really what we're all trying to do, become more of ourselves. And I believe that there is a lesson in almost everything that you do in every experience. And getting the lesson is how you move forward. It's how you enrich your spirit. And trust me, I know that inner wisdom is more precious than wealth. The more you spend it, the more you gain. The three lessons that have had the greatest impact on my life have to do with feelings, with failure, and with finding happiness. When you don't know what to do, get still. Get very still until you do know what to do. And when you do get still and let your internal motivation be the driver, not only will your personal life improve, but you will gain a competitive edge in the working world as well. Because as Daniel Pink writes in his bestseller, A Whole New Mind, he says we're entering a whole new age, and he calls it the conceptual age, where traits that set people apart today are going to come from our hearts, right brain, as well as our heads. It's no longer just the logical, linear, rules-based thinking that matters, he says. It's also empathy and joyfulness and purpose, inner traits that have transcendent worth. These qualities bloom when we're doing what we love. So when we're involving the wholeness of ourselves in our work, both our expertise and our emotion. So I say to you, forget about the fast lane. If you really want to fly, just harness your power to your passion. Honor your calling, everybody has one. Trust your heart and success will come to you. So how do I define success? Let me tell you, money's pretty nice. I'm not gonna stand up here and tell you that it's not about money because money is very nice. I like money. It's good for buying things. But having a lot of money does not automatically make you a successful person. What you want is money and meaning. You want your work to be meaningful because meaning is what brings the real richness to your life. What you really want is to be surrounded by people you trust and treasure and by people who cherish you. That's when you're really rich. So lesson one, follow your feelings. If it feels right, move forward. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Now I wanna talk a little bit about failings because nobody's journey is seamless or smooth. We all stumble, we all have setbacks. If things go wrong, you hit a dead end as you will. It's just life's way of saying, time to change course. So ask every failure, this is what I do. Every failure, every crisis, every difficult time, I say, what is this here to teach me? And as soon as you get the lesson, you get to move on. 
If you really get the lesson, you pass and you don't have to repeat the class. If you don't get the lesson, it shows up wearing another pair of pants or skirt to give you some remedial work. And what I found is that difficulties come when you don't pay attention to life's whisper because life always whispers to you first, first. And if you ignore the whisper sooner or later, you'll get a scream. Whatever you resist persists, but if you ask the right question, not why is this happening, but what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? It puts you in the place and space to get the lesson you need. My friend Eckhart Tolle, uh, who's written this wonderful book uh, called A New Earth, that's all about letting the awareness of who you are stimulate everything that you do. He puts it like this, he says, don't react against a bad situation, merge with that situation instead, and the solution will arise from the challenge. Because surrendering yourself doesn't mean giving up, it means acting with responsibility. It doesn't matter how far you might rise, at some point you are bound to stumble because if you're constantly doing what we do, raising the bar, if you are constantly pushing yourself higher, higher, the law of averages, not to mention the myth of Icarus, uh, predicts that you will at some point fall. And when you do, I want you to know this, remember this, there is no such thing as failure. Failure is just life trying to move us in another direction. Now, when you're down there in a the hole, it looks like failure. So this past year, I had to spoon feed those words to myself. And when you're down in the hole, when that moment comes, it's really okay to feel bad for a little while. Give yourself time to mourn what you think you may have lost. But then, here's the key. Learn from every mistake because every experience, encounter, and particularly your mistakes are there to teach you and force you into being more of who you are. And then figure out what is the next right move. And the key to life is to develop an internal, moral, emotional GPS that can tell you which way to go. The challenge of life I have found is to build a resume that doesn't simply tell a story about what you want to be, but it's a story about who you want to be. It's a resume that doesn't just tell a story about what you want to accomplish, but why. A story that's not just a collection of titles and, and positions, but a story that's really about your purpose. Because when you inevitably stumble, and find yourself stuck in a hole. That is the story that will get you out. What is your true calling? What is your dharma? What is your purpose? Do what you can wherever you are, from wherever you sit in life. Give me your time or your talent, your money if you have it, and they did. Extend yourself in kindness to other human beings wherever you can. It was an interview with David and Francine Wheeler. They lost their seven-year-old son, Ben, in the Sandy Hook tragedy. And even though gun safety legislation to strengthen background checks had just been voted down in Congress at the time that they were doing this interview, they talked about how they refused to be discouraged. Francine said this, she said, our hearts are broken, but our spirits are not. I'm gonna tell them what it's like to find a conversation about change that is love, and I'm gonna do that without fighting them. And then her husband David added this, you simply cannot demonize or vilify someone who doesn't agree with you, because the minute you do that, your discussion is over, and we cannot do that any longer. The problem is too enormous. There has to be some way that this darkness can be banished with light.